In this podcast episode, Dr. Michael Twyman and Dr. Neil Patel discuss the groundbreaking study that highlights the alarming link between microplastics and vascular health. The study found that individuals with microplastics in their blood vessels are 4.53 times more likely to suffer from heart attacks, strokes, or death within three years. The study analyzed 257 patients, with 150 of them having detectable levels of polyethylene in their plaque. The study focused on patients undergoing surgeries known as carotid endarterectomy, where severe plaques were removed from their arteries in the neck. The analysis of the plaque revealed the presence of microplastics in about 50% of the population. The macrophages, part of the immune system, were found to be engulfing the microplastics, leading to oxidative stress and inflammation within the plaques. The follow-up of these patients after surgery showed a significant increase in the risk of heart attacks, strokes, or death within three years. To protect against microplastics, it is recommended to filter water using methods like reverse osmosis and avoid storing food in plastic containers. Additionally, using HEPA filters in the bedroom can help reduce exposure to microplastics in the air. Dr. Twyman emphasizes the importance of vascular health in longevity. He explains that taking care of the vascular system is fundamental to living a longer and healthier life. While advanced technologies like stem cells and hyperbaric oxygen therapy can extend life, Focusing on the basics of vascular health is essential for overall well-being. In addition to traditional risk factors like high blood pressure, dyslipidemia, diabetes, smoking, and obesity, Dr. Patel highlights the importance of looking at other factors that can damage the arteries. Factors like smoking, high insulin and glucose levels, air pollution, oxidized lipids, heavy metals, and microplastics can all contribute to vascular damage. The endothelium, a one-cell thick lining of the arteries, plays a crucial role in vascular health. The glycocalyx, a protective gel coating on the endothelium, helps prevent substances like lipoproteins and white blood cells from sticking to the artery walls. Damage to the glycocalyx can lead to inflammation and plaque formation in the arteries. Dr. Twyman recommends withdrawing factors that damage the glycocalyx and focusing on lifestyle interventions to improve insulin sensitivity and metabolic health. Strategies like exercise, resistance training, and a diet rich in high-quality protein can help support healthy blood vessels and improve overall vascular health. Nitric oxide, a gas produced in the vascular system, acts as a vasodilator and helps relax blood vessels. Maintaining healthy levels of nitric oxide is crucial for cardiovascular health. Dr. Twyman highlights the importance of regular exercise in promoting nitric oxide production. He explains that exercise helps improve cardiovascular health by increasing nitric oxide levels, which in turn leads to better blood flow and overall vascular function. He recommends a minimum of 150 minutes of moderate activity per week, along with resistance training to support muscle health. The conversation also touches on the role of sunlight exposure in nitric oxide production. Dr. Twyman explains that sunlight triggers the release of nitric oxide in the skin which can help improve blood flow and reduce inflammation. He advises on the optimal times to get sunlight exposure, such as early in the morning when UVB rays are present but not strong enough to cause skin damage. Dr. Twyman discusses the importance of consuming nitrates through foods like beets and dark leafy greens to support nitric oxide production. He explains that organic produce may have lower nitrate levels compared to conventionally grown produce due to soil conditions. In cases where dietary intake is insufficient, he recommends beet supplements or other nitric oxide support supplements to ensure adequate nitrate levels. The podcast also covers methods for measuring nitric oxide levels in the body. Dr. Twyman describes a saliva test that can assess nitrate levels and the presence of nitrate-reducing bacteria. Additionally, he explains the use of the endopat test, which evaluates arterial health and nitric oxide production by measuring reactive hyperemia in response to a stressor. Both tests provide valuable insights into vascular function and nitric oxide status. Dr. Twyman emphasizes the importance of interpreting test results in the context of overall health and lifestyle factors. He explains that optimal nitric oxide levels and arterial health are influenced by various factors, including diet, 
exercise, and genetic predispositions. By analyzing test results alongside other health markers, healthcare providers can tailor interventions to improve nitric oxide production and vascular function. The podcast also touches on the significance of monitoring blood pressure as a marker of vascular health. Dr. Twyman recommends regular blood pressure checks and emphasizes the importance of maintaining a healthy blood pressure range. He explains that consistent high blood pressure may indicate underlying endothelial dysfunction and impaired nitric oxide production, highlighting the need for further investigation and intervention. Dr. Twyman explains that high blood pressure, also known as hypertension, is often referred to as the silent killer because it typically does not present any symptoms until it has already caused damage. He highlights the significance of maintaining a healthy blood pressure level, which should ideally be below 120-80 throughout life. Factors such as lifestyle choices, stress levels, physical activity, and sleep quality can all impact blood pressure. Additionally, genetics play a role in determining an individual's predisposition to hypertension. Dr. Twyman and Dr. Patel discuss the importance of genetic screening in personalized healthcare. They mention specific genes, such as LPA, APOE, 9P21, and KIF6, that can influence cardiovascular health and increase the risk of conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and Alzheimer's. Genetic testing can help identify individuals who may benefit from targeted interventions based on their genetic predispositions. The conversation delves into advanced cardiovascular labs that provide insights into nitric oxide pathways, inflammation, oxidation, and lipoproteins. Tests like urine microalbumin, homocysteine levels, and uric acid can indicate the health of the arteries and the body's ability to produce nitric oxide. Inflammation markers like LPPLA2 and myeloperoxidase, MPO, can reveal the presence of arterial inflammation, which can increase the risk of plaque rupture and heart attacks. Lipoprotein testing, including LDL particle number and ApoB levels, can assess the number of particles that may contribute to plaque formation in the arteries. Dr. Patel offers insights on navigating traditional healthcare systems to access advanced cardiovascular testing. He suggests advocating for tests like NMR, ApoB, and fasting insulin to gain a more comprehensive understanding of cardiovascular risk factors. While some doctors may be hesitant to order these tests due to cost or lack of familiarity, patients can reference guidelines that recommend these tests as risk enhancers for cardiovascular health. The doctors stress the significance of a balanced diet in protecting the heart. They recommend a Mediterranean-style diet as a good starting point, but emphasize the importance of individualized dietary approaches. Factors like meal timing, seasonal eating, protein intake, and fat composition are crucial considerations in promoting heart health. They also highlight the role of omega-3 fatty acids in reducing inflammation and supporting vascular health. Supplements like omega-3s and nitric oxide boosters can be beneficial for individuals looking to protect their heart. While dietary sources are preferred, supplements can help bridge nutritional gaps and support overall heart health. The doctors mention specific supplements like chialic garlic and arterosal, which have shown potential in addressing plaque buildup and promoting vascular health. When it comes to prescription interventions, statins are commonly used to lower cholesterol levels and reduce the risk of heart disease. Dr. Twyman discusses the benefits and potential side effects of statins, emphasizing the need for personalized approaches based on factors like vitamin D levels, CoQ10 levels, thyroid function, and genetic predispositions. Dr. Patel explains that azetamib, also known as Zetia, works by blocking the reabsorption of cholesterol in the intestines making it different from statins. It is used to reduce cholesterol levels in individuals who may be hyperabsorbers of cholesterol. The doctors discuss how Zetia can be a suitable alternative for those who are intolerant to statins or prefer a different approach to managing cholesterol levels. The podcast also touches on biohacking strategies and lifestyle factors that can support vascular health. Dr. Twyman and Dr. Patel highlight the benefits of red light therapy blue light blocking glasses, grounding, cold thermogenesis, and sauna therapy in promoting mitochondrial function, reducing inflammation, and improving overall cardiovascular wellness. 
These biohacking techniques can complement traditional interventions and support vascular health in a holistic way.